This is a non-spoiler review of Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Episode 2, titled New Eden. And to start, I'm going with the controversial opinion that I liked it. Star Trek Discovery has continued its second season with another episode that draws on the core concepts of mystery rather than conflict, and New Eden made for a strong follow-up from Episode 1. It's reassuring to see that the new lighter tone has been maintained for more than a single hour. Before the opening intro, the teaser establishes a mystery that needs investigating without any added gravity or drama. The questions the opening poses are enough to motivate the crew to action and by proxy the audience, and it was done well. The Discovery finds a colony that shouldn't exist, and what's more, as the episode progresses, a conflict between Starfleet policies and morality is brought up. A familiar stance for Star Trek Discovery, but in the past it's felt rather forced, with the characters being made to decide seemingly between two evils. Where here, the moral quandary posed is more nuanced, and the arguments both made from a place of compassion. There are a lot of questions brought up as the episode continues on, both that are relevant to the current situation and answered in the show, as well as longer form episodes that contribute to the greater narrative unfolding. Character arcs are continuing to develop, with Stamets still penduluming between emotions, and Anthony Rapp does an excellent job making an empathetic character, even when Stamets is clearly frustrated and brushing people off. Michael Burnham provides the voice of logic throughout the episode, but interestingly enough we see how she copes in a situation where logic alone won't provide a solution, and this is where Pike's more experienced approach enforces a more human aspect to the show. We're beginning to see that Burnham has learned from her actions in the past, and I doubt we'll ever see her blatantly disobey orders ever again, at least without the ability to argue her case though she really needs to work on her interpersonal skills. They seriously suck. Saru also gets a chance to show that authoritative side of him that we saw emerge in the ending of Season 1, and I do feel that he'd make a good captain, or at least a very capable officer who feels comfortable in charge of a vessel and crew. In terms of continuity, the episode makes references to pre-first contact history, and nothing seems out of place and we get allusions to the forlorn state we find Pike in when he was first introduced in Cage. If anything though, this episode enforces my belief that something colossal has to happen to nerf the mycelial network to end spore drive travel, as the restrictions placed on it by the Federation alone wouldn't be enough. We get some old-fashioned away team action, but this time it strongly follows those episodes of TNG where the crew would have to blend into a society and hide their technological origins, much more like the Starfleet I know. It's also good to see that alongside the staple few characters, the rest of the senior staff are beginning to get their backstories fleshed out, which should, hopefully, lead to some developed characters, with several members provided with opportunities to demonstrate their skills and show they're more than just helmsmen and away team member 3. Tilly's incident and its repercussions, along with Stamets lingering trepidation about the spore drive, combine with the overall theme of this episode to show that religion is indeed a focal point for this season. It did come off as a bit science versus religion, but the point I'd make, based on past Star Trek, is why does it have to be one or the other? There certainly is a lot of coincidence in this episode, with the timings of events, but rather than just being the MacGuffin to address or resolve, it instead becomes a central theme, prompting questions such as, is there a motivation we can't see behind the red bursts, and if so, what kind. It points out how frequently humans ascribe motivation and intent to events that could be chance, and on re-watching I found myself noting every time a character did so. One criticism I did have for this episode on viewing it a second time is that the pace was rather rapid, even during scenes where a more sedate conversational tone might have helped not really slowing down until the end. In fact, with the overall nature of this episode, a calmer approach may have benefited the episode more than the action that surges from one scenario to the next, giving even a discussion a hurried tone. 
That being said, at no point was I lost during the narrative, but I did miss some lines here and there. The humour continues in the show, mostly centred on Tilly, and I did find myself smiling at some of the jokes. How did she obtain caffeine in sickbay? And of course she did. Though I do hope that they don't push it too far with her, I still want to see development from the command training program. Overall, the second episode, more so than the first even, has allayed my fears that Discovery is going to turn its back on its new direction, and I'm enjoying this new plot. Although we've yet to see Spock, the Klingons, or Empress 31, so I do expect it to dip its head back below the waves. Let's just hope Discovery remembers to come up for air. I nailed that metaphor, like a Star Trek crewman. Thanks for watching this spoiler free review, but just before I go, spoiler alert for the last minute or so. What do you think of the idea that Spock committed himself to a psych ward? My knee jerk reaction is to be like, oh so he's crazy is he? But we haven't seen the facility, his reasoning, or even him at all, so for now I'm going to withhold my judgement. Also. The Prime Directive coming into play in such a way was a nice addition. The colony is pre-warp, but they're humans, displaced by alien intervention. It's a smart question to pose to the audience as well as the crew, the kind that encourages debate. So what do you think on that too? Contact them? Take them? Leave them? Or is there a middle ground? As for protecting them from the radiation ridden asteroids, well, if they can prove that that wasn't a natural occurrence, then the Prime Directive doesn't apply. But need it apply at all, considering that the colony's presence was not by choice, it seems. Anyway, real finish this time. Thanks, again. I've been Rick, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.